Ahoy there makers, let's take a closer look at the Tufty 2040. So the Tufty 2040 is probably one of the most requested products. So it's a 2.4 inch 320 by 240 TFT LCD color display powered by the Raspberry Pi 2040. So in a nutshell, you've got to look out for the squirrel gags in this, an RP2040 microcontroller with a nice crisp LCD screen to make a snazzy, colourful, programmable badge. Perfect for identifying or expressing yourself at those cybernetic conferences, those illicit undersea research facilities, or dodgy space station bars. You don't have to limit it yourself to wearing it around your neck. I'll give you a demo in a minute of running some kind of display from sensors as well, where you can connect all kinds of sensors to this using the quick or stem QT connector on the back. So let's have a look at some of the features. So like I said, it's got a 2.4 inch gorgeous IPS LCD display and that in-plane switching means that you can look at it from any angle and it looks really, really gorgeous. It's based on the ST7789 driver and unusually it's connected by parallel. So it's got a really fast connection. Normally these are connected by SPI, but this is slightly different than that. It also has a dimmable backlight and on the front of this is a photosensitive resistor, a light sensor in effect. And you can pair the two together to make this automatically dim or bright depending on the room's brightness. It has the RP2040 chip as we've said and it's also got a whopping 8 meg of onboard storage so plenty of space for all those nice graphics and images that you might want to put on there. It's got a quintet of buttons on the front and on the back there is also a power button which is quite unusual. Again, that's because of this has been a bit more high power board than say the Badger 2040. And it also has a boot button and that boot button can be used as a user programmable button as well. It's got a white LED status indicator on it as well. USB-C powered for programming and for power. And it has a JST PH connector on the back for a battery. So input range from three volts to 5.5 volts. It's got a high precision voltage reference for the battery level monitoring. It's a bit like the Badger 2040. It can tell you what your current battery charge level is. So great for badges when you're on an all day conference and you wanna just check, have you still got plenty of charge left? It's got the uh, Quest connector on the back as well. So you can plug in your quick or Stemma QT connectors and it's fully assembled. There's no soldering required at all. We also come on the website with a dimensional drawing and the C++ and MicroPython libraries as well. So software wise, bringing this to life, like I said, we've got the C++ or Python libraries. The MicroPython libraries particularly make this very easy to program on the go. And you'll get the best performance using C++, obviously. But if you're a beginner, we recommend that you use MicroPython. That's certainly what I use on a lot of my projects. So the display functions, I've got this brand new Pico graphics library. So it feels really knocked out of the park with this. Uh, so be sure to check them out. We've got things like JPEG rendering. So you can just drag across a JPEG to render that. You can display QR codes. You just put in the URL or the data that you want to display and it will generate a QR code for you which is really good for conferences. You can do weird polygonal shapes, so that's not easy to say. Uh, import sprites from a sprite sheet, so that's really cool if you're doing some kind of game thing or animation. And you can also do custom palettes, so if you want to save some valuable RAM, you can uh, bring in a custom palette. And CircuitPython support is coming very shortly as well. So connecting the breakouts, if you have any sensors that use the Quest connector, the Stemma QT or the Quick connector, or the breakout gardens, you can connect them to this. So if your breakout has the Quest connector on it, you can just plug it straight in with a JST to JST SH connector. And if you have a breakout garden um, that doesn't have a Quest connector, you can get one of these little connectors, one of these adapters. I have one just here. You can see there the Quest connector goes in one side and on the other side, you've got the usual breakout garden connectors. And that's what it looks like on the back. You've just got the head of things. And if you want to connect more than one sensor, you can also use this multi-port connector from SparkFun. We sell them on the store as well. And you can connect uh, three additional devices just using one connector. So check out the product page for all the different sensors that we have that are currently compatible with our C++ and MicroPython builds. And you can see on the diagram, you've got the boot button over on the right, this the leftmost button on the right. We have the strap area where you can connect a lanyard. We've got the power on off button. You press that, it instantly goes off, saving any kind of battery power. We've got the Quest connector there. We also have the breakout garden header pins if you want to connect one of those. And we have USB-C for power and programming. And we also have the onboard battery connector as well, which is what I've got and I shall show you in a second. So some of the notes to be aware of. So we've designed the Tufty 2040 to be really accommodating to all kinds of input voltage. So from three volts to 5.5 volts. So it's possible to use a whole variety of batteries and battery packs. We recommend using three AAA batteries, which give me maximum juice while you are using your badge and it'll hide away nicely on the back as well. Tufties are quite hungry, they're hungrier than badges. So power consumption is around about 18 milliamps for the screen, full brightness, another 20 milliamps for the RP2040. So around 100 milliamps total. So factor that into your calculations when you're thinking about battery power. The toggle on the back for the power, uh, the on off button, 
it's instead of a reset button and that makes it really easy to preserve power so if you're going into if you're in a conference hall and you just want to nip out you can switch that off save your power and setting the backlight to dim automatically will also save some uh, battery power and make that last a lot longer alternatively you can plug in a lipo or lion battery i've got one over here as well and that has some caveats so please consider if the person wearing the badge knows that they are what they're doing with a lipo they can explode if uh, punctured and so on so you don't want to be giving this to children and them not knowing that much safer to use the AAA batteries a solid enclosure or backplate to properly protect the battery is also recommended so it's a good idea if you are going to wear this for an extended amount of time and you've got like, no, a tie on or something or but whatever you've got there you don't want to getting caught in stuff and getting ripped apart so you know maybe 3d print an enclosure for that or something that can uh, go on the back of it there's no battery protection included on the tufty 2040 so you should only use it with lipo batteries that have got that internal protection all of our lipo batteries do on the store so unlike other boards the tufty 2040 doesn't have a battery charging circuit on board so you'll need an external lipo charger such as the uh, lipo amigo that we sell on the store too so if you're not familiar with this chip, uh, it's Raspberry Pi's RP2040, which is what they use in the Pico product, and it's a microcontroller. It has an ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor running 133 MHz, and it has 264K of onboard RAM. It's then usually paired with some additional storage, so you can store some files on there. And on this particular one, we paired it with an 8 meg module. Uh, one of the exciting things about the RP2040 is that it has programmable I.O., these state machines, and that means we can offload some of the really high processing heavy tasks such as um, dealing with IO and so on we can offload them to the state machines so that it frees up the main CPU to be doing other things okay. so let's have a demo shall we so here we have the Tufty 2040 I'm just going to switch it on I've got it on a battery pack here so you can see there we've got this gorgeous display let me just take this off the uh, stand there so you can see it a bit easier you can see there we've got the gorgeous display now when I'm recording on a um, on a digital camera you will get these sort of um, moire effects, which is that there. You can't see that in real life. That's just where the two sensors sort of align, the the, uh, the pixel grid and the camera's uh, sensor grid. So in real life, you don't see that. You just see a really sharp display. So I just wanted to get that out of the way there. So on the back there, I've got a uh, LiPo battery just uh, connected uh, into the battery connector. I've got some uh, Velcro strips there just to keep that all together. We've got the uh, ABC buttons there, we've got the uh, up and down or X and Y buttons, and we also have there the uh, photosensitive resistor, the light sensor just there as well, so we can automatically dim the screen based on that. And if I press the button C there on this particular demo code, it will go to the QR code for this particular product, which is that uh, URL up there. So just to compare this in size to the uh, the Badger 2040, because I'm sure some people will want to know that, as you can see it's um, slightly taller, slightly narrower than the Badger 2040, and obviously when this doesn't have power, um, the image stays on, but this isn't an e-ink display, this is a, a TFT IPS display, so it does require active power for it to display. And again, if I just press that button on the back for the power, it will go off straight away. So I'm going to take the battery out and I'm going to plug it in to USB. So I'm running the battery test program. Now, if I didn't have this plugged into the USB, you would just see that the battery level, it says on there it's using USB power, therefore it's actually sort of cheating a little bit and uh, not really displaying the correct battery voltage at the moment. So let's have a look at another test. So this is the Pride Badge. Uh, they quite like this one. So this one is great, really, really colorful, really eye-catching, and you can put your name in there, it'll scale the text um, perfectly. So let's uh, type a slightly longer name in here and see what happens. So if I go to the variable bit, so let's type in my full name, and let's run this again. And it will try and squish and guess the, uh, the correct uh, space in there. So let's try just Kevin. See there, it's scaling the text, and if I just do Kev, you get that slightly bigger text again. So really quite clever um, algorithm there to figure out what the, uh, the correct size is for your display. So next up, I'm gonna run the Retro Badge. This is the one I used at the very start of the video. So it's got Mr. Tufty on there. And the text is completely programmable. You can uh, put whatever text you like in there. So the company name, um, you can see down here in the uh, funny window. So we can type whatever we like there. We can type some blurb one, blurb two, blurb three. And then for the QR code, we can put whatever we like in there. So you can type in a different URL or uh, some other different text as well, if you like. And when people scan that with their camera phone, it'll pick up on that usually on Android or iOS, uh, and it'll take them to that particular address.
And you've got all the things there like border size, padding, company height, and then there's a nice little routine there to actually draw the badge. And it's also bringing in um, a, a JPEG there. So we've got the JPEG decoding library, JPEG decode, we've got the QR code there. And then we simply just specify the name of the JPEG file. So squirrel.jpg, which is there, and the squirrel.jpg is in the file system. We upload that to the board. That means we can really copy over any JPEG that we would like. Okay, so next up, let's try the button test program. So this one is just a simple program that tests the buttons. If I press button A, button A pressed, button B, button B pressed, C, down button and up button. Nice and simple. So I've created a little Tufty dashboard. Let's run this code and see what happens. So this one is going to grab some data from the onboard temperature sensor. Let's see if I can get you a better shot of that. Again, the noir effect with the camera makes this look really bad. It's really, really a good screen. There we've got this little sweet spot. And if I zoom in, you can see it much better there. So you can see there we've got the temperature sensor, which is currently reading about 34 degrees. I think that's a little bit out actually on this one. Uh, we've got an air quality sensor. That's actually just random data that I'm just generating. But if I had a, a BM E2080, for example, plugged in via the uh, Quest connector, we could see that. Now, if I put my finger over the uh, the actual RPI2040 chip, let's see if I can actually heat up that little chip and make the temperature work a little bit hotter. So if you watch that line on the right hand side or the bar chart, uh, you should see in a second or two. There we go, it's upticked a little bit. Uh, we've got a little bump there. So all those three, the pressure, the temperature, and the humidity are actually all just the same data on this particular demo. But this is an example of the kind of thing that you could do and you could pair that with a little screen. So, so you print little 3D printed stands like this one. This is for the uh, Pico display pack. Got another one for the smaller display there. And you can do the same kind of thing on those as well and just run that same code, which is like a charting program. So if you want to know more about uh, some of the things that I do on my own personal channel, you can go to youtube.com slash kevinmaclear28. And I do more videos about Raspberry Pis, robotics, that kind of thing. I tend to use a lot of Pimroni products just because they make awesome stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this short video and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.